and a woman, woman, woman In every way, yeah, yeah I'm living my life, life, life Living day by day, yeah, yeah Are you in Welcome every to Every Way Woman. woman. There are some major changes happening in the talk show world. Live from Los Angeles, here's Every Way Woman. Face those imperfections. How do you do it, Cheryl? Well, you know what? I've, I'm fortunate to have been blessed with a very, very healthy dose of confidence. Mm -hmm. So, quite <laughs> frankly, I don't let mine bother me all that much. Mm -hmm. um, a funny story I think of is, um, a, you know, a while back, my ex-boyfriend and I, um, he was my boyfriend at the time, we were, you know, hanging out on the couch at my place and we decided we wanted to go grab some dinner. And so we looked like, we, we left the house looking like we just came off the couch. You were couch potatoes. We were couch potatoes. <laughs> uh, and then we, we, drove in, we drove into town and we saw this restaurant, the Gaucho Grill, and we decided, you know, why don't we just go in? So we went in there knowing good and well we looked like crud, mm -hmm. uh, but we sat down and we had a meal. And since then, it became a, tradi a tradition of ours to actually go back to that restaurant and intentionally look like crap. And it didn't matter because it's like, <laughs> wait, no. wait, hold on. She said she want to go to the restaurant and look like a bum. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and you like, where is this restaurant right. located? Yeah. 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 Downtown Long Beach. <laughs> she didn't have a reservation. Uh, she no she got no the table. reservation. But look, you, I barely had shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's, wow. you, I find it really interesting, though, because coming from the fashion industry as a model, where a lot of times these differences or these imperfections were celebrated as uniqueness mm -hmm. you know their eyes are a little too close together they've got this gap tooth and all this and their exotic beauties and for me and most of the women I know we look at ourselves in the mirror we think oh you know something's wrong that. with me I hate this I gotta change that I wonder how much it costs for a nose job when <laughs> how old do I have to be to start my Botox I mean I see everything wow. that's wrong with me and it's really hard to think that those are things that make me individual or that I should celebrate. Well, I think sometimes that um, it starts with, with our parents and our brothers and our sister, our siblings mm -hmm. and our family. That's um, true. Because growing That's up, true. I, had, I had a grandmother and I loved her, I love her dearly, dearly um, now that she's gone. <laughs> Now that she's gone, <laughs> I mean, God bless her soul. Bless her, Emma. <laughs> okay. But one of the things she used to say all the time is, as I was getting older, you know, I have freckles, mm -hmm. and I had them a lot as a kid. And she would look at me, and she would look at me, and go, ugh, you know, and then she'd move uh, on, and that was her thing. We have a know? lot in common, Madison, because my grandma used to tell me, she, you know, I used to love popsicles and like ice cream sandwiches, and she'd be like, "Girl, you gonna be as big as this house, girl?" Because I have a she big booty. Yes, too. yes, and if I can get my booty sucked, I would just a little bit. <laughs> I <laughs> and some people want to keep their stuff, but I would like to get mine sucked up a little bit. But she used to say, you know, you keep eating those ice cream sandwiches, you're going to be as big as this house. And I was skinny as a toothpick. Right. I lived in San Francisco. I walked up hills and mountains. No. How oh fat was I going to live? Like, really? You, the thing is, though, did it give you the complex? Were you worried about being imperfect in that? Mm hmm as far as my booty <laughs> like, I, want, I mean and I think it does it plays with you a I little think, bit yeah, I mean now now that I'm older you know my daughter has like she's you know age she has a little pop belly and I'm like ooh, you know but I try not to make up a song or tell her not to eat popsicles I really want her to make enjoy up a herself. song I, I, there was yeah. a mom she used to make up a song like ooh, that big belly and so <laughs> <laughs> My niece does the same thing. See, <laughs> they get that when they get eight years old. Your, your niece does the same my, thing my to you? My niece does the same thing to me the other day. She's only two. But and look, she was singing to your belly? She's she's to my belly. You she know, when like, I'm touching it, I'm like, uh. After, uh, I, after I, my son took, was about four, about a year ago, and I'm, I'm a fit person. I consider myself to be extremely fit. And my son looked at me, and I had gotten a, a little chubby. I was kind of depressed. I had just started my divorce. Um. And, um, my, and my son looked at me and touched my belly, and he goes, Having another baby, mommy. Oh. Are you you touch your belly? <laughs> yeah, you know. And he's going, you have another baby, mommy. And I went, oh my gosh. Well, what think, am I gonna do? I think my whole point to like my niece doing that to me, like, let's get real. I lost 160 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Obviously, thank you. But mm. obviously, it that was my like. I have a lot of imperfections, and that's mm. one of them because I still I still struggle with that, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can't be looking at all my imperfections. I I've learned to embrace them. Right. And that mm -hmm. is one of the reasons that I ended up. Um, 
you know, being on the cover of that magazine that I actually took and I said, okay, you know, because you, you know, celebrated what's, what's those this, curves. What's as you should. Yeah, what's the right. stereotype of being on a cover? Mm -hmm. Skinny, right? Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I put you know, I got a corset on and I got a well, yeah, I have exactly. a Coca Cola a body, but I would love for my <laughs> hips and like just my booty just to get, maybe that's, I'm still on that tip. <laughs> right, you just are. Just to get like a little Thank firm. You, Mom. Like, like I want the muscle, I want muscle there. You want a few less minutes in your hourglass? What if you It jiggles sometimes, but I was teased. I was teased. But sometimes, sometimes women look at, Generally speaking, they did a survey. Women look at what's attractive, and we tend to look at what's on the thin side, mm. including our men. Yeah. The men look at what's attractive. They tend to look on what's on the heavy side. Right. Men That's don't true. look at cosmopolitan Curves. and go, that girl right. is hot. They look that at maxim. You, you, know, mm -hmm. you know what I think is really That's interesting, true. though, That's in true. this conversation is that when we are referring to imperfections, we are all talking about our bodies. And that's really telling of where our focus oh. is because none of us have talked about our imperfections and you know our habits or our personalities or what? our lifestyles. What are you talking about? So yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't have any. That's I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's a good point. But you know, yeah, because it, it does start from the outside. Because a lot of times, what mm. we feel on the inside is what we reflect and see on the outside. I that's why we focus you on know, the outside I, because it's the easiest mm. thing to hit first. Thank you, Dr. In terms Madison. of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm in therapy right now. It's like they told me to look in the mirror and they, you know, and my <laughs> therapist at one point did say that. He said, you know, when you look in the mirror, yeah. what you're seeing in, when you see these imperfect reflections is really just what you're struggling and what you're fearing inside of you. And those are the imperfections that we have to deal with. That's the only way we're ever mm -hmm. going to really embrace and love the perfection in mm -hmm our own perfection. You know right. what, now that I'm older though, I don't yeah. really want to take that much ice cream sandwiches. In. I mean, because now I know the outcome <laughs> is my big butt. But I, think but I, I liked think what Anna was saying earlier, because mm. sometimes what can be perceived as an imperfection is what makes you beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. it but. is kind of learning for yourself, because if we look at ourselves in pieces, we can all break each other apart and break ourselves yeah. apart. But yeah. what does it look like as a whole? Mm -hmm. And what does it feel like as a whole? Mm. But if I was to like look at myself and pinpoint at an imperfection that doesn't have to do with my looks, it would probably be that I'm too hard on myself. Wow. Too yeah. hard on myself. That's and that's too truthful. Hard on myself. And yeah. I had to have somebody here tell me that. So I realized yeah. that. You know, yeah. I was like, oh man, it, she's right. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I did make a New Year's resolution to drive around with a clean car. <laughs> inside and out. Wow. Not doing so yeah. well with that. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, watch for your shiny car at the valet. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, more Everyway Woman. Are you an Everyway Woman? You think being a mom and a wife is easy? We have Danielle here to let us know it's not. Welcome back to Everyway Woman with Danielle Adisi for Real Moments with Real Moms. Danielle DC, you've just had a baby about a year ago. Yep. Yes. You had a 4th of July baby. Yep. What was that like? Oh, man. Well, actually, I was afraid that when um, I approached the due date, I would be very afraid. But um, I just, it was so miserable. By the end, you're just so mm -hmm. grateful. <laughs> you didn't even you're celebrating. Like, oh, thank God, yeah. My family came out, and they were all just waiting. It was a week after the due date. I was afraid they were going to have to go. and. It was just, uh, I was really glad when the, went into labor and stuff. How was Holiday and staff? Because it's the 4th of July. Yeah, um, she, well, uh, is, uh, she was actually born the, the first, and then we stayed in till the third. So by, by the 4th of July, we were able to watch from our own home the, the fireworks, and that was really, really mm -hmm. wonderful. So this is your first year of motherhood. Yeah. What would you say is the most rewarding, rewarding part about it? Man, uh, when she cuddles. She's a very active child. She hardly ever sits still. Um, so when she finally calms down and takes that moment to really appreciate me and you know that look in her eyes, that's just, I can't, uh, nothing is like that in the entire world. Was there something within this first year that you didn't expect? Like we all get the book, moms get that book, yep. what to expect when you're, when you're expecting. expecting, but then there are things we don't expect. So was there something that you didn't expect? Yes. Um, when I became, you know, when I was pregnant, I knew there would be days where I was very overwhelmed. I knew there would be late nights, there would be hard moments. What really struck me was that it never ends. It never, ever, ever ends for even just a moment. And just, it's like a marathon, you know, I was, I was ready for some sprints, but it doesn't ever, <laughs> I, you know, slow down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and that was really difficult um, with my family not being around. Uh, they, they live in Wisconsin. I moved to LA about two years ago. So 
uh, that was that was a big surprise. So you're a metropolitan lady, um, married, yes. yes, yes. And how is it with your husband? Now you've been married how long? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. So, so pretty it was early earlier on. than we expected. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean it's it's amazing. Uh, yeah, he is absolutely incredible. Um, surviving in the city together does put some strain, especially with the baby. Um, uh, we've really worked hard to be supportive, but it's it's hard when you look at each other and you see the just the tiredness in, in mm -hmm. the eyes. It's difficult. Um, yes. Now, how do you? What would you say is the most the thing that you've done that he's done for you that has really been supportive that maybe you didn't expect? Wow. He. Um, gosh, he's done so many things. Everything from uh, just just housework. That's something I wasn't really mm -hmm. expecting him to do. Are you working? I am. I do. Yeah. When I um, first, I went back to work at six weeks. Um, I work at, uh, at Starbucks for the health insurance benefits, um, and he he earns the the income. Um, but I went back at six weeks. I was working 35 uh, hour work weeks. I've cut back to about 15. Uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of slowly. I've become more honest with myself. Um, at the beginning, I was like, I can do this. What does that mean when you said you became more honest with yourself? I, you know, I realized that you can do. Um, only so much. You can do a million things, but you can't necessarily do them well. And uh, is that because you didn't feel like they, sometimes you hear that? Oh, the super mom. Yeah. I can do this. I can do that. We can do everything. Did you feel like the challenge of living up to super mom was unrealistic? Um, yeah. Well, I, I to be completely honest, um, the way I would get through on the days that I would qualify as super mom was a ton of coffee. Um, and that really had a detrimental effect on nursing. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so you nursed your babies. I did. Or yeah. your baby. Yeah. I nursed my babies. Yeah, it was amazing. And, 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 well, and difficult. <laughs> I, I thought it would be amazing. The first uh, three months or so was, was, was not painful. that amazing. Yeah. yeah. At one point, I thought I, I remember holding my son and thinking, "I'm supposed to love this, but it just hurts." Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, well, and the, I thought right after the baby was born. I'm done. The, the mm -hmm. worst is, and it was incredibly painful. It like it kept going. <laughs> yes, I was surprised. Now you're you seem like you're in pretty good shape, and um, how was that for you coming out of um, getting back to the main flow of things? What about um, your body? See, this is I'm I'm not back to what I was, and mm -hmm. that's difficult for me. Um, I I do my strategy tends to be uh, whenever I have a little bit, my life is a little bit saner. I'll do cleanses um, mm -hmm. because that's I. It, there's less to think about. Uh, I know a more consistent approach is probably longer term lasting, but like exercise. Oh, <laughs> exercise! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise is. We, but you know no. what? We just joined the Y, and that has been absolutely incredible. I love that you said that. That that you joined the Y. I think it's wonderful. The yeah. Y is a, a place that touches me and its yeah. family and everything. Yeah. So that's really great that you could do that. Yeah. Well, and I didn't know. I didn't realize the impact of two hours of childcare a day. Mm -hmm. but it's, I. That's the only moment I get to myself in a day, so that's been huge. Yes, so it is. It's challenging being a new, being a new mom and being honest with yourself about what the approaches are. Not everything about being a new mom is a dream. But thank you, Danielle, for coming here and sharing your moments with us, and and we can um, help bring a little of truth to childbearing, child rearing. Um, is there any advice you'd like to give to our audience? Uh, yeah, I would just say that um, I would encourage you to feel like you have permission to feel like you can do less and still be super mom. Do less and still be super mom. Thank you. After this commercial break, more Every Way Woman. Are you in every way, woman? Today, Dr. Sherry Thomas is going to give us a little information about menopause, or as my mother told me, the change. <laughs> Do people still refer to it as the change? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Tell me, what is the problem? Why do women have a difficult time accepting menopause? Well, it's not just the word menopause. It's the changes that go on in the physiology of our body. And one of the biggest problems is the problem sleeping. Okay. So those personal summers, hot flashes, cause us to not sleep at night. And as a result, we have some personality changes. It causes us not to think well. 
uh, women multitask all the time. Right. I mean, the first two weeks of our menstrual cycle, lots of estrogen, <laughs> lots of multitasking. And we do a good job at it, my ad. <laughs> but when we go through menopause, we don't produce as much estrogen, uh, so we don't multitask, but also then we don't sleep well. And that sleeping just really destroys our ability to have reserve and to think and to really deal with all those issues we deal with when we're having periods. So in addition to hot flashes, personal summers, and not sleeping, what are some of the other symptoms of menopause? Well, uh, drier skin, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the um, vaginal area, which mm -hmm. causes pain with sexual activity okay. um, or may cause more bladder infections. Osteoporosis. Uh, we also catch up with men with heart disease about 10 to 15 years later because of going through the change. And our body, just the physiology is that we just start aging a little faster. And as women, we just hate aging anyway. <laughs> so, that, and so I think that's why women have such a negative connotation why? about menopause is like, now I'm really going to age. You know, I agree with that. I think that is why women do because you come to terms with I'm getting older and there's something about aging that just kind of messes with our psyche. But what are some of the health risks if I don't address this menopause to change aging? What are some of the health risks? Well, let's, let's back up to how we can go through menopause okay. without the health risks. And that is, let's start about taking good care of ourselves. Good. Making sure Perfect. we see our physician every year, keep our cholesterol and blood pressure and glucose under mm -hmm. control. Not smoking, exercise, eat well, and have a nice social life with our friends and our family. When we start going through menopause, there's a lot of things we can do without hormones. Mm -hmm. And we know estrogen will help the hot flashes, but how can we get through it? Well, let's keep our weight down. Let's cut down on the alcohol, uh, especially at night, because that will really increase the hot flashes. So you're saying a little nip at night is not good for the ladies? Oh, you know, a little <laughs> nip with dinner is fine, but a little nip before you're going to go to bed, oh, okay. it really heats you up and causes more hot flashes. We know that. Plus, to get rid of those hot flashes and let us sleep better, cool your body down. Take a little little cool, not cold, mm -hmm. shower or go in the pool. Well, let me ask you this. As my doctor, um, you, you will help me through this process. Um, what, what should I be looking for or how would you help me if I come in and I say, ah, oh, I'm going through the change. How will you help me or how should I know that my doctor is my advocate through menopause? Well, I want to ask you symptoms I, and specifically which symptoms you're having. Hot flashes, problems thinking, problems concentrating, dry skin, pain with sexual activity. And then I want to ask you, how much is that bothering you? Okay. How much is that affecting your life? If you tell me, you know, I have a few hot flashes here mm -hmm. and there, but it's not a problem. I'll say, well, let's just see how you do, but let me know if it becomes worse. And if you say, I am so overwhelmed, that's why I'm here today, I'll say, let's talk about how we can change things. Now, what about premenopause? Because there's the notion that, you know, women later in age, but I know some people who are close to me that started their menopause or the change in their late 30s, early 40s, or even in their mid-30s. Yes, that happens. We call that premature ovarian failure. Our ovaries produce estrogen and release follicles at a time that's genetically predetermined. Basically, when our mother goes through the change, we will. But some women, their body doesn't pay attention to that. And so in their 20s, 30s, they just stop producing estrogen. And that is very significant okay. and very upsetting for them. Because we know as women between 45 and 55, we're going to go through the change. But when women start doing that at 25, first of all, it may take them a few doctors right. to really diagnose what's going on. No, it's not a thyroid problem. No, you're not having some infection. No, you are going through the change. And then we start treating it appropriately. Okay. Because I know you talked about some of the health risks by not going to the, to the doctor. So if, if I'm having those symptoms, um, what should I do tomorrow? <laughs> what should I do tomorrow? If I'm hot flashing, or what should I do tomorrow? So if you're having hot flashes and you say, gee, I didn't sleep well, get a fan out, take a little cool shower, go, go swim at night before, don't drink the alcohol, not high spicy food, see how you get through the night. If you feel like the next day, oh, I'm still just wrung out, I'm miserable, I can't go to the meeting. Every time I sit through a meeting, I'm drenched. I just feel beat red and uncomfortable. Go see your doctor. The fastest, quickest way to get rid of hot flashes is taking estrogen. Okay. Well, hopefully a lot of people will be making doctor appointments today. Listen, ladies, in order to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. If you're having a personal summer, getting a little hot flash, or just not sleeping well, you could be starting the change. Stay tuned, Every Way Woman. We'll be right back.
Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day.